The title of this lesson is Common Factors. We have three learning targets. First, I can explain what the greatest common factor is. Second, I can explain what a common factor is. And three, I can find the greatest common factor of two whole numbers. So this is a concept that we've worked on throughout the year, um, especially when we were simplifying fractions and our dividing fractions unit. Um, but we're just going to do a little bit of a deeper dive to make sure that this is really solidified in your knowledge bank. So for our warm-up, let's practice um, <clears throat> finding the GCF, um, which is something that we've already done before. So number one, our two uh, numbers are 10 and 60. So one way to do this would be to write both numbers out and then list all of the factor pairs. So remember, a factor of a number is any number that can divide the larger number evenly. Okay, so 10 can be divided by 1 and 10, and 2 and 5. That's it. Those are the only factor pairs. 1 times 10 is 10, and 2 times 5 is 10. And now let's do 60. So 60, we have 1 and 60. We have 2 and 30. We have 3 and 20. We have 4 and 15. We have 5 and 12. And we have 6 and 10. So now, to find the GCF, we have to look at the different um, factor pairs. So I can see that they both have a 2. And I can also see that they both have a 10. And 10 is the largest factor that they both have in common. So the GCF of these two numbers is 10. That is the biggest number that both um, of these numbers can be divided by. So I'm going to put a 10 there. All right. 24 and 8, we're going to do the same thing. Always good to start with dividing that number by 1. All right, so 24 can we divide by 1 and 24, 2 and 12, and 3 and 8, and 6 and 4. And 8 can be divided by 1 and 8, and 2 and 4, and that's it. So they both have a 2 in common. Um, they both have a 4 in common. And they both have an 8 in common. And 8 is the largest number that they can both be divided by. So my GCF for the next one is 8. And we're going to do one more together using this method, 6 and 4. So 6 can be divided by 1 and 6, and 3 and 2. And 4 can be divided by 1 and 4, and 2 and 2. So they both have 1 in common. Um, all numbers do. Um, but they also both have a 2 in common. So the GCF here is 2. Once again, that is the largest factor, the largest number that both of these values can be divided by. So at this point, why don't you pause the video and try the rest of them on your own. All right, so I'm not going to show this process for all of the numbers. I'm just going to go through the answers. So 40 and 30, the GCF is 10. Both of those numbers can be divided by 10 evenly, and that is the largest number that they can both be divided by. Um, 2 and 6 can both be divided by 2, would be the GCF there. Um, 20 and 12, the GCF would be 4. 4 and 8, the GCF would be 4. Sorry, this isn't lined up very well. Um, let me see if I can extend this a little bit, if that'll help. Okay, that's a little better. All right, 120 and 4 can both be divided by 4. Notice, like, in 8 and 7, that sometimes the GCF is one of the numbers in the number pair, right? Because any number can be divided by itself, and if that number is also a factor of the larger number, the GCF may be one of the numbers in your number pair. Uh, 3 and 4... The GCF is actually 1 because 3 is a prime number, meaning it's only divisible by 1 in itself, um, and 4 is not divisible by 3. So 1 would be the only factor they have in common. And then for number 10, uh, the GCF would be 3. Both numbers can be divided by 3. 
All right, so now we are looking at Diego's bake sale. So now we're going to be putting our knowledge of GCF to a real world context. So Diego is preparing brownies and cookies for a bake sale. He would like to make equal sized bags for selling all of the 48 brownies and 64 cookies that he has. Organize your answer to each question so that it can be followed by others. All right, so number one. Diego, um, how can Diego package all the 48 brownies so that each bag has the same number of them? How many bags can he make, and how many brownies will be in each bag? Find all of the possible ways to package the brownies. So, once again, so he has 48 brownies, and he is trying to split them up into bags. So what operation is that? Splitting something up into equal groups? That is the definition of division. So basically, we need to divide 48 into equal groups um, to find the different possibilities that he has here. So um, go ahead and pause the video and do it yourself, and then you can resume the video to check. So one would be one bag of 48 brownies, and also worth mentioning that you can also do 48 bags of one brownie. So whenever you're thinking about division, um, you can kind of flip it, you know, either one group of 48 or 40 groups of one. I'm only going to do that for the first one. Um, but in theory, you can always switch the factors depending on the context. Next would be two bags of 24. We could also do three bags of 16. Um, we could also do four bags of 12. And we could also do um, six bags of eight. So these are all of the different factor pairs that we have. Okay, so there are five. Um, now he wants to package all of his 64 cookies. So we're going to do the same thing, but instead of having 48 brownies, we're doing 64 cookies, but the same process. So he could just do one giant bag of 64 cookies. He could also do two bags of 32. If he split it into four bags, he could do four bags of 16. And he can also do eight bags of eight um, cookies. Okay, so those are all of the different possibilities of dividing 64 cookies into even bags. So now number three though, how can Diego package all the 48 brownies and 64 cookies so that each bag has the same combination of items? So how many bags can he make and how many of each will be in each bag? Find all of the possible ways to package both items. So now we need to kind of combine our knowledge from problems one and two because now our bags aren't going to only have brownies or only have cookies. They're going to have both of them. So we need to find ways that we can divide both of those numbers evenly. So every number is divisible by one. So one bag of um, 48 brownies and 64 cookies. Um, both numbers are even, so they can be divided by two. So two bags of 24 um, brownies and 32 cookies. Um, are both numbers divisible by three? I see that I could have divided the brownies into three bags, but I could not divide the cookies into three bags. So three bags won't work here. Um, I was able to divide both of them into four bags, four bags of 12 and four bags of 16. So then we could do that. Um, four bags of 12 brownies and 16 cookies. And also, I can see here that I divided um, both of them. All right, so I can also see that um, they both could be divided by eight. So I'll do um, eight bags of six brownies. And if I divided the cookies into eight bags, that would give me eight cookies. And I can also see here that um, both could be divided by 16. So I could also, for my final combination, 
16 bags of three brownies and um, four cookies. So what is the largest number um, of combination bags that Diego can make with no leftover? Um, so that would be 16 bags of three brownies and four cookies is the largest number of bags that he could make. So now, the greatest common factor of 30 and 18 is 6. So what do you think the term greatest common factor um, means? So once again, we talked about this before. We can find all of the factor pairs, all of the numbers that both um, of your values can be divided by. So 1 and 30, 2 and 15, 6 and 5, skip 3 and 10. And 18 is 1 and 18, 2 and 9, and 6 and 3. So what factors do they have in common? They have 3's in common, 2's in common, but 6 is the biggest number they have in common. So it is the largest number that both numbers can be divided by evenly. No remainder. So factors would never have um, decimals or anything in them when we're talking about GCF. So find all of the factors of 21 and 6, then identify the common factor, or the GCF. 1, 21, 3 and 7 is it, 1, 6, 2 and 3, GCF is 3. Find all of the factors of 28 and 12, then identify the GCF of 28 and 12. It's the same process as before. 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7, 3 and 4, and 6 and 2. The biggest number that they have in common is 4. All right. And now for a word problem, a rectangular bulletin board is 12 inches tall and 27 inches wide. Elena plans to cover it with squares of colored paper that are all the same size. The paper squares come in different sizes, and all of them have whole number inches for their side lengths. So what is the side length of the largest square that Elena could use to cover the bulletin board completely without gaps and overlaps? So... Once again, we have a bulletin board that is 12 by 27, and it needs to be covered um, by pieces of paper that are squares. And remember, a square is equal on all sides. So, what we have to do to find the biggest possible square, we need to find numbers that fit into both of these evenly. So, factors. So, 1 and 12, 2 and 6. 3 and 4, 1 and 27, and 3 and 9, and that's all for 27. The biggest number they have in common is 3. So what is the side length of the largest square that Elena could use to cover the bulletin board completely without gaps and overlaps? So um, squares that are 3 by 3 inches are the largest squares that she could use to fill the board evenly. Um, and that's because both um, dimensions can be divided by three evenly, so it would fill the board without any gaps. It wouldn't go over or um, leave any gaps in between them. So how is the solution of this problem related to greatest common factor? Um, the reason is, right, we want the paper to fit in evenly, and that's because factors are numbers that can divide a whole number evenly. So if we wanted to find pieces of paper that could cover something evenly without any spaces, the factors of that number would do that. And we needed to find um, a piece of paper that was the largest size, so the side length of the largest square. And so real quick, here are your big ideas. Um, make sure to pause the video now and copy those down and then get started on your practice problems.